Brilliant, thank you very much. Thank you, Shana. Um, when we set up the Facebook group for this um, uh, protest, Can't Pay, Won't Pay, Solidarity with the People of Greece, we had so many people join it so quickly, 22,000 in fact, that uh, Facebook disabled my account. Clearly, they're scared of us fighting back. But uh, I'm, don't worry, I haven't been disappeared. I'm back and I'm here to fight. So whether you found out about this meeting through Facebook, through a flyer, or through your friend, it's great to see many, so many new faces here tonight. I'm here to talk about the cuts in education and what we can do about this. And uh, you may know that this Monday our lovely new government announced £200 million worth of cuts to higher education. And an extra 10,000 places have been axed. And the amount of management doublespeak that they talk about is enough to confuse anybody. We have to be sharp to see them coming. When they say rationalisation, they mean cuts. When they say natural wastage, they also mean cuts. In fact, I wouldn't believe anything that they have to say. And don't believe your director when he, or occasionally she, tells you that they can't do anything about it, because they can. They sit on all sorts of academic boards, and they can express the wishes of the students, and they can argue for more funding, they can reallocate resources, and all sorts of things. There are some that may argue that, only, that we should only be lobbying MPs, that protesting is too radical. Well, I say that protesting is essential. We will not win by going to ministers or school directors and so on for a nice cup of tea and saying, please, sir, can I have some more? <laughs> we need to take the example of NUS Ireland. Faced with the introduction of variable tuition fees, they took to the streets and campaigned on every campus. Led by their self-professed, not even a lefty president, they managed to win the argument for free education and roll back all of the aggressive proposals. So this is, you know, what we need to be doing. You know, don't be intimidated by your management. As students, we have the right to protest. And what other time in our lives can we be as radical, enthusiastic and inspiring as when we are students? It is our protest that lends support to our lecturers. If they see us taking the lead, they will gain confidence and also join us. And we need to transform our unis by making our unions political. From here, we can start questioning why is so much money being spent on war, on Trident, on the bankers and so on, when they could be spending it on education. I've changed my speech a bit, so... Yeah. Um, <laughs> last year, uh, this year, sorry, Kings have just had a, a terrific result, and I'm pretty sure that this is because they've been political for a, a number of years now. They had occupations over Gaza and so on. And there were lots of uh, um, sit-ins and occupations over Gaza. And then we occupied our director's buildings at SOAS over the deportation of cleaners by the racist UK border agencies. And we have started to see a new wave of occupations over the cuts to education as a fantastic example at Middlesex. Um, they talk about axing all sorts of non-quantifiable subjects, philosophy and many other arts and humanities subjects being them. And what do they mean by this rate of return? They're prioritising all the business management, business management in China, business management in Japan, at so as this is, you know, prioritising those over these ones that they can't see any immediate return on. And I don't think it's a coincidence. I mean, of course they don't want us to think about how to change the world. They want a whole army of non-thinking worker bees. Well, we are not going to be turned into mindless robots. As the Irish Students' website says, education is a benefit both to the individual and to society. And what better rate of return can we get than that? And more than that, education is not just what we are taught in the classroom. Often we learn more on the picket lines and, at dem and, de and on demonstrations than we learn in our lessons. So I say get out there and demonstrate. And of course this is not just about course cuts and job losses. These issues are totally political. When management at Middlesex um, decided to, you know, suspend and, and, and harass and intimidate the students, the protest turned from economic issues into political issues. We need to be asking, what sort of education do we want? Do we want one run by unaccountable, unelected management? Perhaps we need to rip up the constitutions and start again for an education that benefits us all and not just the market. We've uh, just got a couple of things to announce before I finish here. A couple of calls to action. Uh, first of all, there's a delegation of people going over to Greece. There's a fabulous student conference at the, uh, the 18th to the 20th of June, I do believe, isn't it? 18th, 
18th to 20th? Yeah, I'm going on the 9th for a bit of holiday in advance. So um, if, you'd if you'd like to come with us, then you can email me. My email address is very, very simple. It's revolution at soas.ac.uk. <laughs> Or you can look um, on the Yulu campaigner blog, which me and Ian, the vice president at Yulu next year, will be running together. And then finally, it's the protest that we're looking at on uh, 22nd of June. This is when the full emergency budget will be announced. We want everybody there. We want you to bring your union banners, your school banners. We want you to get tweeting, Facebooking, holding local meetings to build for this. And we want to tell these people that their crazy politics means that we can't pay, and more importantly, we won't pay. Thank you.